JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFT's daily market review for February the 28th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we, but before we start let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment uh, recommendation and should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, uh, today I will talk about the coronavirus, the coronavirus and the coronavirus. We saw equities plunging yesterday on fears that the spreading of the virus may uh, result in a global recession, but we will see the details in a while. As for today's events, although investors may keep their focus on, uh, on developments surrounding the uh, the, the coronavirus. Um, the releases worth mentioning here are Sweden's GDP for the fourth quarter, Sweden's preliminary CPIs, the US personal income and spending data uh, which comes alongside the year-over-year -year core, core PCE rate which is the Fed's favorite inflation measure and Canada's GDP for the fourth quarter. As it is always the case, let's start with um, with the performance of the US dollar against the other G10 currencies. The dollar traded uh, mixed against the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. It gained against the Kiwi, the Canadian dollar, the Norwegian crown, the Aussie and the British pound in that order while it underperformed against the yen, the Swiss franc and the euro. The strengthening of the safe havens uh, yen and franc and the weakening of the risk-linked currencies Aussie and Kiwi suggest that uh, the flight to safety, meaning the risk-off trading mode, continued and uh, continued yesterday and today as well and this is more than confirmed by turning our gaze to the equity world. Global stock indices continue to collapse, setting the stage for their worst week since to the 2008 financial crisis. Wall Street felt the heat uh, the most, with all three of its major indices tumbling more than 4%. You can see the Dow Jones declined 4.42, the S&P 4.42 and the Nasdaq 4.61. As I said, uh, the S&P uh, tumbled 4.42%, its largest percentage decline since, the August 2011, since August 2011, while the Dow Jones also falling 4.42%, uh, falling recorded its biggest point drop in its history. You can see that uh, how large is uh, this weekly drop but yesterday's daily drop in the Dow Jones was uh, was its biggest in history the Dow fell 1190.95 points in just one session now Nasdaq fell the most in percentage terms uh, it fell 4.61 percent which is equi equivalent to 414 uh, points closing uh, closing 12.7% down from its record closing achieved on February 19th. So you, this is uh, the record closing in NASDAQ and you can see that uh, the huge tumble and now we are 12.7% uh, down from uh, that record peak. Now at this point it is worth uh, mentioning that uh, the CBOE volatility index, the VIX index, also known as the FIAR index, surged to 39.16 yesterday, well exiting its 10 to 25, let's say, normal range of the last uh, few years. 
and also surpassed its February 2018 peak of 37.32. Okay, uh, the, 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 the culprit was no one other than uh, the coronavirus. The, the epidemic continued spreading at a fast pace uh, with the number of cases staying into acceleration territory and reaching a total of 83,113. While following a few days of uh, slowdown, deaths accelerated as well, hitting 2,858. Again, I'm describing those two graphs I have uh, almost every day. Uh, anything above zero points to acceleration, anything below zero points to a slowdown. You can see that the cases remained in acceleration territory and that the deaths after a few days, after three days of uh, slowdown mode, they jumped back into acceleration. Now, what is over China's failure to contain the virus within its uh, borders continued to, to Hayden? To uh, according to market reports, nearly 10 nations reported their first cases, while deaths in Italy, the European country that is hit the most, rose to 17 yesterday, with the number of cases surging from something more than 200 to 650. In Germany, France and Spain, the numbers of infected uh, people are 27, 18 and 15 respectively, while in South Korea, the nation with the most infections outside China, uh, the confirmed uh, cases advanced to 2022. Now, it seems that investors remained in uh, panic uh, mode as the fast spreading of the virus related disruptions uh, and economic effect, as the disruptions of um, the fast spreading uh, virus and the economic effects are threatening to throw the globe into another recession. In, uh, in the US, although the spread between the three month and 10 year treasury yields has narrowed back to minus 15, uh, yields along, along the whole curve continue to tumble. You can see here, uh, here that we have uh, uh, yesterday's yield curve compared with, uh, with Wednesday's yield curve. And you can see that uh, all uh, yield, yields uh, across uh, the whole yield curve have uh, have declined and uh, with the 10-year rate hovering near its uh, record low of 130. Now on top of that, investors brought forth their expectations with regards to further easing by the Fed. On Tuesday morning, we noted that uh, the uh, investors were anticipating one cut in June and another one in November. Yesterday, the closings of the Fed fund future yields uh, were pointing to nearly one in April and another one in November. That said, this morning, uh, the CME Fed Watch tool assigns a 90% chance that the Fed will decide to pull the easing, the easing trigger at its upcoming gathering, which is scheduled for the 17th and 18th of uh, March. Now, as for our view, we stick to our guns that the worst is not over yet. Scientists have warned that the virus could spread more easily than previously reported, while yesterday they know that it remains unknown how long the virus can, survi can survive on surfaces, which, as a, consequence, uh, as a consequence, leaves unanswered a lot more questions over the virus spreading and keeps uncertain whether and when uh, the virus could be contained. Now, with, repo with reports suggesting that it may take at least 12 to 18 months uh, for a vaccine to be developed, we repeat that the economic wounds may not be as temporary as previously believed and may well drag into the second quarter. Now, with regards, to, with regards to the markets, we expect investors to continue abandoning equities and other risky assets like uh, the risk-linked currencies Aussie and Kiwi as they seek shelter into safe havens like the yen, the Swiss franc, gold, bonds and perhaps the euro. Yes, the euro. The common currency was found the second winner in line which suggests uh, that it may have been used as a vehicle in carry trades due to eurozone's negative interest rates. Namely, it may have been borrowed for buying other currencies like the US dollar in order to invest in uh, risky assets like US stocks. 
With investors now unwinding massively such trades, extra low yielding currencies are getting benefited. Even if uh, risk assets rebound somewhat uh, due to this week's uh, overstretched decline, we would not try to catch a falling knife. We prefer to treat such a bounce as a corrective move before the next possible dive. Now, be bearing in mind the fact that it is the world's reserve currency, the dollar may also wear its uh, safe haven suit. However, given the aggressive bets over more cuts by the Fed, we prefer to avoid exploiting any USD strength against other safe havens. It would be better to do that against the risk-linked currencies, like the Aussie and the Kiwi. Due to the slide in oil prices, the greenback could also perform well against the Canadian dollar and the Norwegian crown, the nations of which are largely independent on oil production and exports. Having said all that, our best gouges of, uh, of risk sentiment remain the combinations of, uh, risk, of, risk, of a risk currency against a safe haven, like Oz Yen and Kiwi Yen. Indeed, Kiwi Yen was the worst performing among uh, pairs consisting by G10 currencies. Now, as for today's events, Although investors are most likely to keep their gaze locked on developments surrounding the coronavirus, there are some noteworthy releases on today's agenda. During the European uh, day, Sweden's uh, GDP for the fourth quarter is coming out and expectations are for the quarter-over-quarter quarter rate to have declined to 0% from 0.3%. But this would drive the year-over-year -year, uh, rate up to 2% from 1.6%. From Germany, we have the preliminary inflation data for February. The CPI rate is expected to have held steady at 1.7% year-over-year, while the HICP1 is expected to have ticked down to 1.5% year-over-year from 1.6%. This may raise speculation that the headline rate of uh, the Eurozone as a whole may also held steady. Now, later in the day, the U.S. personal income and spending data for January are coming out, alongside the year-over-year -year rate of the core PCE index, which is the Fed's favorite inflation ga gauge. Personal, uh, personal income is expected to have accelerated to 0.3% from 0.2%, while no forecast is available for spending. The case for accelerating income is supported by the acceleration in average hourly earnings for the month, while the increase in the retail sales, uh, in the retail sales rate may result in a similar uh, move in the spending one. Now, with regards to the core PC rate, it is expected to have ticked up to 1.7% from 1.6%. Last but not least, we have Canada's GDP data for the fourth quarter. The quarter-over-quarter quarter annualized rate is forecast to have uh, fell to 0.2% from 1.3%. Uh, uh, now, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great day, a great weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again here uh, next week. For those who are interested in learning about the main uh, events of the, week of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link uh, in the description below. So, goodbye everyone, have a great day, and have a great weekend. JFT just fair and direct.